Apple hacked. Uber hacked. Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Kanye West, and Joe Biden hacked. Some of the most high-profile Twitter accounts in the world taken advantage of for a Bitcoin scam? An unprecedented Twitter hack targeting a number of high-profile individuals. The FBI is leading a new investigation into the most high-profile hack in Twitter history. It really underscores just how important Twitter has become in American society. Why would hackers so publicly hijack Twitter for Bitcoin? Bitcoin, for the uninitiated, is a decentralized cryptocurrency built on blockchain technology. The hackers used a well-worn scam of promising to double the money to all who sent $1,000 worth of Bitcoin to a wallet address. But what helped the scam rake in over $100,000 were the accounts that were spouting out the message. It just showed the holes that are present within Twitter and its cybersecurity. The scammers leveraged the trust that followers had in accounts held by Elon Musk, Apple, and others to solicit these donations. We know that they used social engineering. The problem is it looks like for some time there's been some serious abuse, and we've got reporting that the former inside folks from Twitter's uh, security team had been concerned and raising concerns to senior management for some time. So far, three people have been charged in relation to the hack. A 17-year-old named Graham Clark, who is accused of being the mastermind behind the security breach, and two others have also been charged in connection to the hack. It would certainly be a, a wake-up call for Twitter in terms of what they need to do to double down on their user security. The fact that Joe Biden was impacted, this shows, you know, what could go wrong if uh, the next time someone tries to break in isn't a couple of teenagers, you know, out for some money, but rather uh, perhaps some nation states who want to influence uh, the U.S. election or uh, maybe something more nefarious than that. that attackers do not always have sophisticated ideas that they want to do once they gain admin access. Sometimes attackers are just kids, right? They might be a 17 year old and they're just trying to get cred and they want to do an attack and they're like, whoa, look at me. Some reports have pointed to a forum known as OG users as the possible starting point of this hack. The users on the forum had a very specific type of target they went after. Certain accounts are known as OG accounts. OG is shorthand for original gangster. An OG account is an original account on a platform. If you've ever tried to make an account with your name only to find it taken, that's an OG account. Accounts with one character, such as one, three, or six, are also coveted as status symbols. Hackers on this sim swapping forum were offered a golden opportunity. According to reporting from security expert Brian Kerbs, a user on the forum was offering email address changes and account control for Twitter accounts for prices between $250 and $3,000. A year ago, there was also um, another you know, breach that occurred where people were uh, switching out you know, SIM cards to get around two-factor authentication in order to hack users' accounts. You know, this, this impacted Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey himself. SIM swapping is a method of tricking telecoms into giving control of a phone number to a hacker who can then use it to take full control of an account. We don't know exactly what happened yet, but my best hypothesis is that they didn't need to worry about multi-factor authentication in this case because they had admin mode. And admin mode's kind of like God mode. You could think of it like that. The things, the tools that you have on your account, um, things like multi-factor authentication or a password, uh, those things don't really matter anymore. Because if you can change the email that's listed on the account, then you can go ahead and do a password reset flow, for example, and you don't need to worry about multi-factor authentication authentication anymore. You can just shut that off. Previously, some Twitter contractors have been fired for abusing access to Twitter admin tools that had this capability. And apparently, based on uh, Bloomberg and some other reporting, um, you know, it was fairly routine for these contracts to be fired for blatant abuse. Once the hackers changed the email associated with the account from within the admin panel, they could change the password and take control. Our whole digital identity is tied to our email address. And if someone can change that from, you know, your personal address to an attacker's, then they can verify themselves, they can you know, change passwords, they can do other kinds of things. Social engineering takes advantage of the biggest weakness to any security program, which is the human element. People can be tricked, coerced, or be financially motivated to give up secure access. Social engineering is any act that convinces a person to take an action that may or may not be in their best interest, coined by Christopher Hadnagy, who wrote all the books on social engineering. So when you're thinking about how you gain access to Twitter and affect the hack that we saw, there's a number of ways that you could do that. Twitter revealed that a targeted spear phishing attack was used to gain access to internal Twitter tools. 
In a phishing attack, the hacker is throwing out emails and messages broadly like casting a net. A spear phishing attack has a higher rate of success because it is pointed at a specific person, and it usually means the hacker has some information on the target that they can use to tailor the attack and trick the user into clicking on a malicious link in an email or text, or giving up more personal information which can be used to pretend to be the person, for example, to interact with Twitter text support. As best we can tell from the current reporting, there's an internal system at Twitter that they use for a number of things. They use for uh, abuse management, right? So on a scale of you know, a platform like Twitter, you've got 870 million active <laughs> users. Um, and so you can put a lot of machine learning and uh, you know, automation in place, but at the bottom of all that, there, there's ultimately human beings. In the past, it's been reported that a few uh, employees uh, were you know, influenced by, uh, by folks from Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, there was one instance where one employee went rogue and I believe uh, suspended President Trump's account for, for a little bit of time. So they should have seen that this was something that could happen. It's, it's not the first time. It really is just the latest in a trend. Well-funded state governments are willing to pay considerable money to target individual dissidents or activists um, to compromise their devices, to, to um, sort of out their, you know, out their identity, and then potentially target themselves and families. I mean, you know, there's been uh, good reporting around this with, um, uh, you know, with Citizen Lab and, and some of the others. Uh, but yeah, it's a serious issue. What Saudi Arabia allegedly did is a common tactic of foreign intelligence services, which prefer low-profile operations that stay out of the headlines. By comparison, the July Twitter hack was highly public, heightening suspicions that the Bitcoin scam was a distraction from something more sinister. Now, one of the big questions from the national security, um, you know, sort of community, the, the intel community is, well, was this some sort of, um, you know, di diversion or, or kind of, you know, distraction from some wider purpose? The fact that a relatively unsophisticated group could gain access to these high-level accounts puts forth the notion that a state-sponsored group, such as PLA Unit 61398, GRU Unit 74455, and others, could utilize similar techniques to hack Twitter for far more nefarious purposes. When major leaders of the world uh, make statements on Twitter, that, that you know, that, that can have catastrophic impact. And so it's sort of odd that in this case, it looks like the the, the people who took over these accounts were basically just concerned with petty theft. We've heard reports, of course it's not confirmed, that over a thousand people at Twitter had the capability to make those types of changes on the admin panel. After hours of hacked accounts tweeting out the Bitcoin scam, Twitter reacted by locking down every validated account. Users for these accounts lost the ability to tweet for several hours, and in some cases it took up to a day to regain full functionality. The FBI launched an investigation into the hack. Questions quickly arose about Twitter's oversized influence and how a hack like this could be catastrophic and could even start a war. Twitter has, you know, quite a room for, for growth, but this is something that they need to really figure out. And it's something that they certainly have to shore up, especially because the few folks who are on Twitter tend to be very influential people. Uh, this, of course, is journalists, um, celebrities, and of course the president himself. So if they can't, you know, keep the confidence of those users, they're just gonna lose, you know, their entire reason for existing. And with the 2020 election only months away, the possibility of disruption is ever present. Joe Biden, the Democratic nominee for president, was also one of the victims of the hack. President Trump's account reportedly had additional protections to prevent tampering. Other things they can do are make sure that you have a two-person sign-off rule. They call that the four eyes rule. Um, so that if you're having to do, say, an email change for Elon Musk, you probably shouldn't just have one person have that authorization. After the recent hack, these types of protections could be applied to other high-profile accounts. Twitter faces the problem that many companies would kill to have. Namely, what happens when you become so important to the national discourse that a hack is a national security risk? A request for comment by Twitter was not returned by the time of this video's publication. We always say in the InfoSec world that you want defense in depth. And basically what that means is you got to do a lot of different types of things. So you need technical tools, you need training, and you need to make sure that you can observe the types of actions that people are taking at an, at an organization. For Twitter, getting security you know, down tight and locked up is gonna become a much higher priority. In the past couple of years, the company really focused its efforts on reducing the amount of harassment that users were facing. That's because harassment was really you know, beginning to take a toll and drive some people off of the platform. Some folks as notable as comedian Leslie Jones. She quit Twitter after you know just getting a bombardment 
of, uh, of harassment from her users. Um, the issues that Twitter is having with security, they could have a similar type of ramification if uh, you know we start to see a celebrity here or a celebrity there start to quit Twitter for the sake of you know keeping their data secure. I don't put that blame on the sort of frontline folks on the Twitter security team. I put that squarely on management, um, right? Because there's you know with a platform of that important and that um, you know and that kind of volume. Uh, some priorities were given, it, it looks like, to, to not really address what appears to be serious concerns that were raised by internal staff. And I think there needs to be some, you know, some accountability for that and some, some uh, you know, explaining to do. You know, of course, sometimes you'll have one user get, you know, socially uh, hacked and, and their account gets taken over. But it shouldn't be, um, you know, a platform wide issue that affects the top users. And the reason I say that it's a shame is because Twitter is now gonna have to turn its attention to fixing something as basic as security, which of course drives away their uh, creativity and their productivity from things that could be much more interesting, such as new features and uh, innovation on how people can use the platform as opposed to simply having their data secure. If I were this attacker, if I were putting myself in the malicious attacker's shoes, and I am attacker, I'm an attacker, but I do it for white hat purposes, um, I would have disrupted the election, right? I would have waited until November and then tweeted something out from Joe Biden's account, right? And then boom, you've disrupted an election or done something really, really sinister. Um, but these folks, they might not really have had those interests. Not everybody wants to see the world burn. Some people just want to make some money and get some credit.